I'm Katie and welcome to episode 14 of MyDenmarkTV.com. Myself and Joanne are going to look at a few different things today, such as where can you get Danish newspapers, take a look at the freedom of Danish universities, we're going to revisit Danish design and check out what's to see and do in northern Denmark. But first... Did you know the United Nations Climate Change Conference is going to be held here in Denmark from the 7th to the 18th of December? The main goal of the conference is to achieve a global agreement concerning greenhouse gas emissions. There are a lot of initiatives and events happening all over here in Denmark. Check out www.cop15.dk if you want to know some more. Denmark has a wide range of newspapers offering national and international news, such as Posten, Politiken, Berlinsketidne and Börsen. It also entered the free sheet market a number of years back and you can pick up a selection of newspapers at your local metro or S train station. Now if you're looking for news in English, you can check out the website of the aforementioned Jyllandsposten, Politiken and the Financial Daily Börsen, which offers some of their news for an English language audience. There's also the weekly newspaper, the Copenhagen Post, and national broadcaster Dior just began offering a wide range of news services in languages from English to Bosnian, so there's plenty to choose from. The local city council here in Copenhagen is also planning on offering a podcast service of English news on website radio in the near future, so there's plenty to choose from. We've touched on Danish design in past episodes, from their furniture to, as you can see, another design exhibit gracing the streets of Copenhagen. But the question is, is design just decorative or is it really part of their culture? Well, a quick visit to any Danish apartment and I think you'll agree, it's very much a part of their lifestyle. I like to joke with some of my friends that their apartments look like they came straight out of a catalogue magazine because they look so well put together. Now, Danes love their designer goods, whether it's furniture, but also electronics, such as home brand Bang & Olufsen, which is known for high-end electronics, TVs and stereos, and you usually find one or more of those in a Danes apartment. A typical Danish apartment, in addition to all their matching furniture, of course, might feature a lot of stylishly placed candles, their designer goods, and perhaps a delicate orchid on the windowsill. Which reminds me, if you are invited over for dinner with your Danish friends, don't worry about bringing an expensive gift to go in with their designer apartment. A nice little plant or maybe a bottle of wine will more than do and it will be greatly appreciated. If you are thinking about coming to Denmark to study, I would like to give you some useful information on the study environment in Danish universities. You know, in Denmark, there would seem to be a spirit of you are never too old to study. This is because Danish education system actually allows students to take breaks whenever they want. During the breaks, they can find a job or travel to see the world. As long as they fulfill the requirement, they can always come back when they feel they are ready. So it's actually very usual to see some students here in Denmark in their late 30s and even 40s. And in most cases, students can design their own education by choosing different semesters, courses, seminars and projects from a large number of Danish and foreign universities. It's very flexible. You know, another interesting thing is that the relationship between the professors and students is very relaxed and informal here. There is no need to call your professor by their last name, or sir, or mister. You can just use their first name directly, for example, Martin, Jens, something like that. Sometimes you can even find yourself having a beer with your professor in a Friday bar. Most visitors to Denmark may have only heard of Copenhagen and the Little Mermaid, so we want to show you some of the other things that Denmark has to offer. One of my personal favourites is the picturesque seaside town of Skane in northern Jutland, where many, if not all, of the houses are painted a distinctive colour. 
which is known as Skane Yellow. It was a favourite haunt of turn of the century painters and still attracts thousands of visitors each year, not least because of its proximity to Graden. Graden is the most northerly point of all of Denmark and it's here on the very tip of the beach you can see the two waters and seas of the Skerak and Karigat meet in an explosion of waves. Now, it's a bit dangerous to swim here because of the tides and the currents, but it's a great day out for any nature lover who wants to walk in the dunes. And history books can also explore the abandoned World War II bunkers. And if you have any tips or recommendations on what you'd like to share with the rest of our viewers, please leave a comment and we'll share it with you in an upcoming episode. This week's question comes from Vanessa in the US, who's thinking about relocating back to Denmark with her Danish husband. Now, she has some office experience, but not a lot of knowledge of Danish, and she's wondering what kind of American companies operate here. Well, Vanessa, the first thing, as is the same anywhere with the recession, there's not a huge demand for new employees. But don't let that put you off. If you try the American Chamber of Commerce, they have a huge membership list of companies, American and Danish, that work in Denmark. And don't worry, there's also a lot of Danish companies nowadays that are globalised and their main language of operation is English, so you should try contacting them directly. The thing is to keep trying and don't be put off by rejection. I remember when I first came here, I must have gone through 150 applications and a dozen interviews before I finally got my first job. So the trick is to persevere. That's it for this week, but join us again next week when we'll look at the recycling culture in Denmark and of course answer your all important questions. Please feel free to get in touch with us through our website mydenmarktv.com, we love to hear from you. You can check out our website, catch the latest episode or even share your favourite episode with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the show. Until next time, bye bye. Did I finish? Greatly appreciated and amazing my words today.